Freedom Machine Tool Patriot 4x8 CNC router. And as we pan forward on this machine, we can see uh, this particular model has a 5 horsepower HSD tool changer spindle. As we come around, we see it's got a 6 position tool changer, 5 tool holder cones, and a tool touch off sensor. You can see right there. Coming around to the back, we see we've got a Trevaney 10 horsepower vacuum hold down system. This is the standard model that Freedom uses with their 4x8 model machines. Here we have the Fagor 8035 control system, a hardwired industrial controller. We're talking to Bill Oberg from Freedom Machine Tool um, about this Patriot CNC router. Bill, what makes your machine unique or different from all the other machines in this price point? Kevin, uh, I'd like to start and answer that question. I'd like to start looking at the table. Uh, one of the things on uh, machines in, uh, in this price range is the flatness of the table. And this is a pattern that I cut. And if you look at this pattern, this whole pattern across the table is two thousandths into the table surface. And it's consistent all across the table. When I uh, spoil board cut this, Kevin, yesterday, I took three thousandths off both sides to get a perfectly cut spoil board. I mean, that just talks about the, the steel construction and the integrity of this machine tool. This table is flat, and I think that that's a real distinction uh, for a machine in this price range. What else would you say is unique about this machine in terms of the way that it functions, the drive systems, etc.? Well, I'd like to, you know, let's take another minute to just walk around the machine. If you come on over on this side with me, Kevin. Um, one thing I like to talk about with the Freedom is that we are a one-piece base frame. All steel, all welded, one piece. And we actually stress relieve this base as well. As a matter of fact, all of the frame components on this machine are solid steel, tubing, plate, um, and uh, angle iron. And that just, that just makes for a lot of integrity in the machine tool. We're not mixing metals together, and we're not doing a lot of bolt together. Um, like, if you look at these column uprights, Kevin, what you can see here is that, again, it's a, it's a solid steel weldment. We put gussets in the corners, and we spread the rails out. I mean, imagine, you could put bearings here, but by spreading these bearings out a foot, we give a lot in, of an integrity to this bridge. Um, same thing up here on the gantry. Uh, we weld steel plate onto the, uh, the tube and then we machine that for attaching profiled rails and you'll see that this machine has profiled rails on all axes. Bill, uh, tell me about the drive systems. Uh, specifically, are we looking at a rack and pinion machine here? Uh, is it servo drives, stepper motors? Yeah. What type of drive um, system do you have? Kevin, what we're using is we're using precision ball screws on all axes and we're coupling those with brushless AC servo motors. Uh, as a matter of fact, our whole control system, and this is a Fagor 8035 control, as, as you pointed out, and we're also using Fagor brushless AC servo motors and Fagor serving amp servo amplifiers, and they're all a matched set. So that it's a real strong, again, industrial control system, and then we're matching it up with very nice precision ball screws. Let's get a look at the ball screw. Okay, we've taken the cover plate off the machine here. And here's the ball screw across the x-axis. There's a couple of things I'd like to point out to you here, Kevin. Uh, again, nice size precision ball screw here uh, on the bridge axis. These are angular contact bearings uh, on the ends of these bearings, uh, on the end of the ball screw. And this is a beautiful bearing set. I see a lot of the manufacturers in this price range either turning their ball screws in brass bushings with no bearing at all or using a very flimsy steel plate with a, with a standard bearing shoved into it. So if you look at the nice machined um, bracket for holding the, the uh, ball nut, I mean everything on here is real precise, real precision. It's, it's just real industrial quality machine tool components. If you look at the drive here, um, again, brushless AC servo motors, and we tuck it in the tube real nice. Nice timing belt drive system, pulley timing belt drive. Uh, again, I, I, I would challenge you to find a, a more nicely appointed machine tool in this price range. Bill, one of the things I find 
interesting about this machine is I've looked at a lot of machines in this price point is this Fagor controller. Um, I've never quite seen one of these on a machine at this price level. You certainly see them on high-end systems. Most of the time with the lower cost setups we see PC-based control systems. What, what makes this controller superior to a PC-based control? That's a really good question, Kevin. Um, yeah, th this is a decision that we made not to go with a Windows software uh, controller like many of the machines in this price range. We decided to use an industrial CNC control and there are a lot of advantages. Number one, any Windows software controlled um, uh, or, or Windows software controller, of course, is dealing with everything that Windows is always doing, like out on the internet and this and that and the other thing. And we actually even tried to put a Windows PC control in this machine. But what we found is that the drives, the Windows was losing contact with the drives. And that's a fairly regular situation because Windows is trying to do too many things. I like to call the Fagor a computer with tunnel vision. Its only job is to run this CNC machine. It's not trying to be out on the internet, it's not trying to update its software, it's not trying to be accounting software or anything else. It's totally dedicated to this machine tool. Can we get a look inside? We are a look inside that controller. Bill, you want to tell me what's going on in here? Yeah, I will, Kevin. Um, you know, really nice clean box design here. Again, we've got the Fagor um, AC servo amplifiers. These are matched to the drives. So very nice, you'll see very nice wiring in here, disconnect, uh, our frequency inverter, and of course this is the control panel and the control brains right here. So again, a very nice clean panel inside, uh, you know, what you would expect from a much more expensive machine tool. Okay, here we've taken off the spoil board, and we see the vacuum table exposed. Bill, tell me a little bit more about this one. I understand it's a four-zone gridded pattern. That's right. Uh, this is, uh, we've got, you know, a, a number of different vacuum options. But this is our four zone option. You can see um, the different cutouts that we have for each zone. They're four by two foot zones. Each one is gasketed and of course has the ports that are going out to the handles in front. But a nice phenolic top, again very flat, um, on top of all the steel framework, a really sturdy, stable uh, a table configuration. Um, What's the material? Is this phenolic? Yes it is. This is phenolic. Okay. And then we do have, you know, helicoil inserts here for attaching your different zone boards if you want to, if you wanted to attach them to the table. Guys thought of everything. I love we've it. Thought, we've tried to think of everything, Kevin. We really have. And again, we do go into a two-zone uh, vacuum plenum. We can make custom plenums. We do an aluminum T-slot table. And we also just do a flat phenolic machine flat with or without helicoil inserts. Very nice. Now we're excited uh, to watch a demo of this video. And here we go.
program does have little 40,000 up and down movements in it, which is what you're seeing on the, the up and down. And I guess they're leaving little, little uh, taps. Okay, as I was starting to look at this and pull it apart, I got really intrigued by these tabs. You see the tab on this part? I mean, it is so thin, none of these parts moved, and look at this. There's your piece. It's flawless, just flawless. Here's the next one, this little fellow right here. Didn't move an inch. Look at that, right out of the board, like butter. This was a demo file sent to us by AMSEC, and as I pointed out during the cut, they're using tabs on the full sheet. We really only needed tabs for the small parts. In any case, the parts snapped out beautifully, which speaks to the flatness of our table and the care we take to square up the spindle. Thanks for watching this Freedom Machine Tool video.